In Matthew 28, 19, Jesus himself said, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And even though the examples of baptism after the cross are in Jesus' name, who's to say that it's wrong to baptize in the exact words of Jesus? Now, that's a, a very important question. So let me give you a background before I just hit that hit on. It's your, your whole philosophy of studying Scripture. We are apostolic. What that means is th there are several ways that you could try to approach truth. One way is just to take tradition that's handed down century by century by century. And not being disrespectful, but just being factual. The Roman Catholic Church, the Eastern Orthodox Church, they say follow the traditions. Follow what the creeds say, the councils say, what the popes say. So you shouldn't try to go back to the first century and figure it out for yourself. You should accept the received tradition. And then the Protestant Reformation came along in the 1500s to say, wait a minute, there's some things in the tradition that have gotten off track. We've got to reform the church. So they protested the medieval church. That's why the name Protestant. And they tried to reform it. That's why Reformation. But we as Pentecostals actually go a step further. We say we must restore the original church. So we've got to go back to the first century. And while we have Pentecostal traditions too, the point is each generation cannot just accept what's handed down. We've got to test it with the same experience and the same message as the original church. Now you might ask, well, why do you think that's better than these other methods? And my short answer is that's how Jesus set up the church. So when you accept Jesus as Lord, you will accept the apostles as the authority. Because Jesus himself did not start any local churches. He did not write any books. But he chose the apostles and he commissioned them to start the church. So when I ask, what did the apostles preach? What did they teach? What did they practice? I'm really accepting Jesus' lordship because that's how he set up the church. So with that in mind, I know that's a long preface, so we say, okay, let's take water baptism. And you see that Jesus said to baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. He told that to the, the apostles, the disciples who were there, and then he left. So you say, okay, what did they do? You go to the book of Acts, and every time there's a name or formula mentioned for water baptism, without exception, it's the name of Jesus Christ. And we can go through that, Acts 2, the Jews, Acts 8, the Samaritans, Acts 10, the Gentiles. Right there, that covers the whole human race. Because everybody here today, you're either Jewish or you're partially Jewish like the Samaritans or you're Gentile, you're not Jewish. And there's a precedent. Acts 19, people who'd already been baptized another way were re-baptized specifically to take the name of Jesus. That's how significant it was. Acts 22 is the story of Paul's baptism and he said... He was told to actually invoke the name, utterly pronounce or call the name. So when you read the book of Acts, there's no question that the apostles actually invoked in the name of Jesus Christ or in the name of the Lord Jesus. And then there are at least five or six examples in the epistles that refer back to Jesus' name baptism, where it's clear they're talking about being baptized into Christ, baptized, buried with him in baptism and so forth. So you have all this massive evidence that the apostles invoked the name of Jesus. And by the way, it's interesting, but in the last 20 years, the mainline scholars, almost without exception, both theologians and first uh, church historians say the original formula was Jesus' name Baptist. We used to be one of the few people that actually said that. Now the mainline scholarship says that is correct. Now, for us, when you say this is conclusively what the apostles did, that's the end of the discussion. But for most other theologians, if you just establish, well, that's what they did in the first century, they will still argue, well, we've had developments since the first century. Maybe it's better to do something different today. Uh, but we say, no, you know, what the apostles believe, that's it. So let's go back to this main thing. So here you have this maybe seemingly uh, contradiction or dilemma Jesus says in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, the apostles consistently baptize in Jesus' name. I've heard some say, well, I'd rather take the words of Jesus. But the problem with that is Jesus didn't actually write that. 
Matthew wrote it. He was one of the 12. And Peter was st standing right there listening to the same thing. Then on the day of Pentecost, when Peter preached, be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, Matthew was standing right next to Peter right. saying amen. So if Peter got it wrong, Matthew should have pulled his robe and said, hey, don't, didn't you remember what Jesus said a few weeks ago? What's wrong with you? But he didn't. So you, you can't say I'll choose the words of Jesus because if we can't trust the apostle Peter, if we can't trust the book of Acts, if we can't trust the epistles, well, how do we know really what Jesus did say? We're, we're stuck. You know, the Bible is, would be false, and we don't even know anything. So you could say, well, there are two contradictory methods. Well, that's strange. Jesus said to do it one way, and all the apostles did it the other way. That doesn't seem very likely. And so then you're left with, well, there must be a harmony. And so here's where our apostolic belief comes in. We say, if that's how the apostles understood it, that's how we should understand it. If that's how the apostles practiced it, that's how we should practice it. You can't go to, say, the 4th century and say they knew more than the apostles knew. Or the 21st century and say they knew more, that we know more than the apostles. We need to follow it what, how they understood it. So, now that leads, this is a long discussion, but it, it covers so many things. So, then you have to say, when Jesus said, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, what did he actually mean? And how could the apostles walk away saying he meant Jesus' name? Well, let's say from a Trinitarian perspective, a oneness perspective, or whatever, if you say Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, that's God, right? He says baptize in the name, singular. Not three names of three persons, but one name that would cover the whole Godhead. Now, from our perspective from, from the 4th century on, there's been the teaching of the doctrine of the Trinity. So when we hear Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, or Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, in our minds, we automatically jump to the doctrine of the Trinity. But go back to the 1st century. One of the basic principles of interpreting Scripture, you have to take it in the context, the historical and grammatical context of that time. So when Jesus said that in the 1st century, nobody ever taught the doctrine of the Trinity. That word Trinity wasn't even used. The word term three persons. It's not even in the Bible. So the apostles that he was talking to were Jews. All they knew was Deuteronomy 6.4. Hear, O Israel.